going on here. So, what's the normal GFR? Greater than 60, right. And your BUN? 10 to 20. 10 to 20, y'all doing great. The pre-admin? Now the interesting part about it, you're the only one that said what I had written on the paper because when I lectured last week, uh, they said um, other numbers. So this is what I'm asking, 0 0.5 to 1.2. All right? So if you find out that the patient is okay, you're gonna start your uh, aggressive uh, rehydration. Now if they came in with an ambulance, we know they automatically already got the fluid running. It's, that's just a given. Whether they can get it out of their system or not, that's the, that's the protocol. Once we get in, because that one or two liters, but we give them so much fluid, and as I talk, you'll see how much fluid we're gonna be given on each one of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna break down DKA and HHS. When I'm talking about DKA, I'll let you know what I'm talking about DKA. When I'm talking about HHS, I'll let you know what I'm talking about it. However, if I stumble and forget to let you know which one I'm talking about, or you didn't hear which one I'm talking about, make sure that you get it clear because I don't want you confused when you get ready to take test three. I know you all focus on test one, right? Um, two. Test two right now, mm -hmm. but um, test three is up the rear, really quickly. Mm -hmm. All right. Four and five. All right, so here we go. You're gonna begin with resuscitating a patient uh, aggressively. You're gonna replace that fluid due to the severe Dehydration. All right? My pleasure. All right. The fluids that they use, it's usually half normal saline or normal saline. Don't concern yourself about that corrective sodium if you are a book reader. But some people do read the book and some people do tell me, well, what about the corrective sodium? I have nothing to do with that. It's in the book. Uh, I don't really talk about that. But that's how your healthcare provider will determine whether they're gonna use half normal saline or normal saline, all right? Okay. Now, there is a protocol in every hospital where they set up a protocol for DKA, a protocol for HHS, a protocol for just hyperglycemia. So when you get in your facilities, you need to know the protocol of your facility. But because of testing purposes, I use a handbook that set up uh, a protocol. So this is the protocol that we're using here. All right? We're doing DKA, rehydration. The patient should receive one to two liters of either normal saline or half normal saline within, God bless you, the first 60 to 90 minutes. The patient with DKA should receive one to two liters of normal saline or half normal saline within the first 60 to 90 minutes. <coughs> now, you always have to reevaluate the patient and see what's going on. The patient may receive up to around four additional liters within that first five hours. So see, this is the reason why you have to do the kidney function test to make sure that they may be able to remove all of that fluid. So in the DKA, they will receive an additional four liters within the first five hours. Now, in the DKA, once the glucose falls below 300 milligrams per deciliter, your glucose falls below that, 
Then you can change the fluid to D5 and a half, no more saline, at a higher rate, which identifies like 150 milliliters per hour. So, <clears throat> once the glucose falls below 300 milligrams per deciliter, the fluid can be changed to D5 and a half normal saline at a high rate that I identified as 150 milliliters and over. Just depends on what they mean. DKA <coughs> rehydration. <coughs> Any questions? Move into the next one. HHS rehydration. You remember this is the one I told you it starts off with the osmotic diuresis. You remember I told you that this patient can lose anywhere from 100 to 200 milliliters per kilogram of fluid. All right? They lose a lot of fluid. <coughs> so what's going to happen? They're going to get a lot more fluid. The first liter of fluid should infuse within an hour. The first liter of fluid should infuse within an hour. And the fluid is normal saline or half normal saline. We're talking about HHS. Normal saline or half normal saline. The remaining eight liters should be given within 24 hours. So you see they have a remaining eight liters. And that should be given in a 24-hour period. So total nine liters over 25 hours? Yeah. Okay. Everybody okay? Got it down? Thank you. All right. That's how you're going to deal with the rehydration. I already talked about supporting hemodynamics. DKA and HHS, you support what's the problem. If the patient is hypotensive, you treat them the way you treat a patient with hypertension. All right? So that's what I mean by support hemodynamics. Whatever's wrong hemodynamically, you're going to treat it. Now, again, I'm going to slow down for the control of the hyperglycemia. Because you've got to give a bolus. Now, this is very important. You give a bolus of regular insulin. You only use regular insulin for boluses. And that's IV push. And it's usually initiated by 0 0.15 unit, units per kilogram. Your bolus is usually 0 0.15 units per kilogram. So if I was to ask you, But let's see, if I had a patient that weighed 90 kilograms, what would I do to get my answer? Okay, so I'm going to multiply. What am I coming out with? Okay. 13.5 units. All right? So, simple as that. You said you get the bolus for both types? Uh, yes. Thank you for bringing that up, but yes. 
give the bullets for both sides. Because I may not have said it. So thank you. For both of them, they're going to be on, on the insulin drip is always on the pump. And this is a titratable <laughs> medication. This medication is titratable. Your titration <coughs> should be anywhere between 0 0.05 to 0. Point, yeah, bless you. 0 0.1 unit per kilogram per hour. So just remember when we talk in titration, you have a time with it. So let me repeat that. Titration is done by increments of 0 0.05 units to 0 0.1 unit per kilogram per hour. <clears throat> so that's how it will be run. Now, for both of DKA and HHS, we don't want the patient's glucose to fall too quickly. So we would like it to fall within an hour's period between the increments of 50 to 70 units. I'm sorry, 50 to 70 milligrams per deciliter per hour. All right? We don't want the insulin to fall too fast, so we want to come I mean in insulin. The glucose to fall too fast, so we want the glucose to be dropping anywhere between 50 to 70 milligrams per deciliter per hour. Do I need to repeat any of that? Yes. yes. What you want me to repeat? The, the glucose. No, this doesn't know the whole thing? Yes. Okay. All right. This is for both HHS and DKE. You give a bolus of regular insulin only. You only use regular insulin. Initially, it's 0 0.15 units per kilogram. That's for your bolus. You're going to use a pump and you're going to titrate. When you titrate, it's done by increments of um, 0 0.05 to 0 0.1 unit per kilogram per hour. The glucose should not decrease any quicker than 50 to 70 milligrams per deciliter per hour. And that's with both. Okay? <coughs> There's a slight difference here, so I'm gonna break it up. Okay. You said we're gonna titrate on a pump? Yes. Mm -hmm. But the goal is is IV push. Yes. Okay. If the glucose for the DKA, if the glucose for the DKA is less than 200 milligrams per deciliter, we're going to increase, decrease, decrease with the D, the insulin by 50%. If the glucose in the DKA is less than 200 milligrams per deciliter, then we're going to decrease the insulin by 50%. Got it? If the glucose for DKA <coughs> is less than 200 milligrams per deciliter, then decrease the insulin by 50%. Got it? Yes. If the glucose for HHS is less than 300 milligrams per deciliter, then decrease the insulin by 50%. If the glucose in HHS is less than 300 milligrams per deciliter, then decrease the insulin by 50%. <coughs> 
50 percent. Right? Your target glucose we're looking for is anywhere between 140 and 180. For both. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. For both. For both BKA and HHS. Is that, <coughs> fast, is that a fasting? Or is just regardless, whatever? Um, fasting. 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, if we, like, especially like the BKA, you remember we changed it to B5 and a half? Mm -hmm. Well, that's going to affect it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, 140 to 180. 180. Okay. So, so far we hadn't fed this patient. Okay. But this is what I'm talking about when I'm saying once the glucose is um, 200, then you're gonna de you're gonna decrease the insulin according to the protocol, and you probably will start feeding the patient and doing the slider scale. I okay. think that was one of my. Let me see which slide was that. That was. It might be slide 10 on y'all's paper, but then I change it all the time. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I said use the protocol to transition a patient from insulin, IV, to subcutaneous. Mm -hmm. And I say that the glucose is usually 200 milligrams per deciliter. It's on the slide, so you don't have to write this down. Mm -hmm. pH is less than 7.3, and your anion gap is above eight, uh, 18. I mean, your bicarb is above 18, and your anion gap is normal. So we're going to do some questions to how to bring all of that home. You said for to transition from the IV to the sub-Q, that's for DKA or HHS? Both. Okay. And if you look back at the slide that says anion gap, that's what you find the transition or your conversion. So you don't have to write it in the notes back here. Okay. Okay. All right. Did you say the target glucose is 140 to 180? Yes. Okay. Now, unfortunately, even though we have an order here, the potassium will change that order for you. Why? Okay, I've given this patient copious amount of fluids. What do you think happened to the potassium? It's decreasing because they're going back into the cell. The potassium is now going back into the cell. So, what would happen if I was to give a patient insulin uh, and the potassium is low? It decreases it even more. Right. So, we don't want that patient to go into cardiac arrest. All right, so when it comes to when you're given a copious amount of fluid, you definitely should be really concerned about your potassium before you give your insulin. All right? So because would, would they just give you potassium as well if it's dropping too much? Yeah, you would have to do a potassium run, run if it's too low. Okay, so we know potassium is intracellular. And the potassium, after you've given a copious amount of fluid, but you're supposed to give insulin, make sure that your potassium is not like in 3.0, 2.8, but I think 2.8 or something like that, you can even introduce a cardiac arrest, all right? You don't want to do that to your patient. Because they did start out, <coughs> might start out as hyperkalemic, but after we give so much fluid, it might be hypo. So we can take them from one extreme to the next. All right. Any questions before I move to the next one? Do you have a story about C? Because I don't know where I cut off the. Um, So this is his pre-hospital. You have the notes in front of you, so um, I want you to look at his pre. 
and I didn't take it as far as the history, no medical history or insurance. So the ED nurse took the handoff from the paramedic. This is the assessment done by the ED nurse. So it looks like there's some changes to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, just in case somebody doesn't have their room. another liter of fluid. And the lab results, we got a high glucose, right? Mm -hmm. So when you think about it, what are some of the immediate interventions? The fluid resuscitation. Fluid resuscitation, what else? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. D15 insulin. Well, I don't need to be 50 so much. The bolus insulin? I need the bolus insulin. I thought I'd hear a D50 insulin. D50 insulin does work. And it works, and you usually, it's basic. It's a crisis, like in that surge, they use the D50 insulin. So no, you're not totally incorrect. But we already got somebody that we got a lot of coping fluids being given. So one thing I want to make sure that you're all aware of, um, you all got this answer, right? So these are my findings. Patient found at home. I didn't say his age, did I? No. Okay, patient found at home. I want to repeat the ABG. Why? Because I just intubated the patient. So I need a repeat. We already up to two liters of lean, so we need to continue our rehydration. We need to give insulin, but not before I check my potassium, because even though my potassium was 5.8, as I give fluids, I've already given two liters. I want to see where my potassium is before I push that insulin, because I'm definitely probably going to push insulin. Oh, um, Danny and Gap, it's 18. So that means he's in a metabolic acidosis, right? Okay. So those are some of the cues. And not all of them, but it's not all of them, but it, it's, it's a component. Um, Grandma, do you all have this one? <laughs> 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 Um, so yeah, so let's look at Ms. Smith. So when we look at Ms. Smith, we're probably thinking some kind of infection may have brought this on in her situation. She sounds like somebody with the what? To me, she sounds like someone with the flu. Because I'm looking at the fever, the fatigue, the headache, the runny nose, the high temperature. High temperature brings on tachycardia. All right? And just remember, and I know all the instructors have told you this, 
But just remember, whenever you, you take a test, always kind of know what your math is to make sure that this patient um, is okay. All right. So a lot of this is important. The glucose, right? It's like what a seven hundred. Oh, the WBCs. 15,000, so that's an issue. Um, your patient's slightly acidotic, but not as acidotic as the DKA. So what you think she might have? She may have HHS, all right. Oh, um, yeah, the bicarb is also acid. All right, so, when we really look at the prioritizing, what we're going to do is the format that I gave you, the prioritized care, you would go through that process to take care of this patient that's in HHS, all right? And that's basically, this patient will be, um, what did I say the capacity? Did I? So it's not high, high, so it's kind of on the normal side. So you're going to aggressively rehydrate the patient. Did I put anything to say she was, yeah, there it is, that she was a little weak, ready pole, because I wanted to bring out the fact that she was dehydrated. So one of the first things you're going to do is you're going to rehydrate this patient. You're going to aggressively rehydrate this patient because this patient is in Support the hemodynamics. Let's see. The blood pressure, I don't remember what it was. Um, what is the, um, is it 75? 90 over 54. What's the math? 66. 66? Okay, so that's a little low. So we're going to do something about that blood pressure. Hopefully the fluid will bring it up, okay? But, because it's, it's not like extreme, extreme you would bring on what? Like if it was very low, if your mouth was very low, what medication oh, should you do? Dopamine. Dopamine. Your process, dopamine, I heard somebody say it, okay. Good, but she's not quite that severe. Analyze, oh, where she comes from first, what happened? Okay, we already said that. And control the glucose, and you're going to definitely manage your electrolytes, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So our goal is to write down the three problems for this patient. I would say fluid volume deficit. I would say um, electrolyte. Imbalance, open electrolyte imbalance, and I would say um, <coughs> base. So just remind me, when do I replace bicarb? When it's less than like 7.3? If your bicarb is less than 20, your pH is less and than 7.20. I thought it was 7.3. Yeah, I'll come back around like that, by the way. Yeah. That's, good. That's just to reinforce it, okay? Um, so, if it's less than 7.20, your pH, your bicarb, and it doesn't have to be both, but most of the time it is, and your bicarb is less than 20, then you give somebody your bicarb. Oh. All right. And when I'm looking at the fluid volume problems, I'm looking at the INO, I'm looking at um, the central venous pressure, the patient weight, all of that's important. All right? And I said, remember that to replace the potassium if necessary prior to giving insulin. Okay. Here's the first question. After we finish the 
245 is greater than 240, so yeah. wouldn't I report that? You would report. What do you think? You would report it, but the thing is, um, doing a, like a teaching. Oh, gotcha. I, oh, you got And me, that's girl. what, you got no, I've got me. Yeah. That's the reason I'm looking for it. All right? So, it. yeah, because I am doing a teaching, gotcha. Well, I'm saying greater than 240. Right? So, yes, you would still report it, but I just don't want to confuse you all. You don't want to teach them. That. that should almost be a wrong answer, but I accept really? this as the correct answer because I tricked my own self. <laughs> I'm going to get you. And that's possible too. So, the only thing you don't do here is to drink high caloric beverages. All right? But because you're doing a patient teaching, <clears throat> now, if this is the same, this is what's going on with the patient. The patient should report which of these findings, uh, which of these, yeah. Then, report the glucose of 245. That would be correct. But at this point, and look, I fixed it in one place and I didn't fix it in the I fixed it in the answer. All right. Now, just know that when it comes to um, diarrhea, if they have diarrhea over six hours, we may have a problem here. So just, but look at that protocol and know that box. All right. <coughs>
So what's my cue here to give me the correct answer? There's something happening with this patient. Behavior change. So what would you give me for an answer? C. C. Exactly. Because when they start with that confusion and agitation, strong possibility they're dealing with air hunger. I don't think you need to give them the bicarb. You don't think they need bicarb? Because you say 7.2 and, and less than 20. Okay. No bicarb. And they don't really need the potassium, huh? It's 4.5 right now. Okay, you all are doing great with it. Okay, so I let me take a picture of this. Hold up a second. Yes. I'm gonna definitely have to go back on this one. <laughs> Well, if they say they wouldn't have the appetite to eat, though, right? They usually don't have the appetite. But not, not the the last though. time I said to do a soup or some kind of... Yeah, that's what I'm saying, not to do the 15 grams of carbs. But, acor but according to, if they can eat, according to that protocol, anything you see in green is correct. Okay. Right. So they're going to increase the frequency when you teach them type 1 diabetic with an acute illness. When I say acute illness, I mean, like, let's say they just have a cold at home and they, 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 they feel it bad. All right. So, but they got sinusitis or something like that. That's enough to send a patient, I mean, a person with fever. So, this is what you tell them to do at home. All right. So, the ones in green are correct. <coughs> Notify the health care provider if it's greater than two four. Um, don't take over the common medications for 
respiratory problems, you need it to My eat health, you need to go to a doctor. Is it right? 15 grams of that gram? Yes, yes. Uh, 15 grams of carbs hourly. Uh, 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 I, I, I wasn't joking. I just couldn't now, the it. only thing that I'm going <coughs> to change in here is on number four. Because it looks like I changed it, but then I must have put a different outline. So this is called clothes, C-L-O-Z-E. This is the clothes type. So you're going to look at it. You're going to read your uh, scenario, a UK study. Now, you have a patient who has admitted who is diagnosed with a neurologist type 2 experience an episode of HHS. The patients stated, the reason for stopping the medication, all right, look at option one. Which one of these medications? Metformin. The metformin, because of the article that suggests that it damages the kidney. The blood glucose is, in HHS is, C, C, C which is, on the option B, right? Correct, good. Now, the healthcare provider of order aggressive rehydration with, which one? B. 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 A is too much, mm -hmm. so B, all right? In the first hour, and administer a bolus of D, 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 D regular mm -hmm. insulin, and the only thing I want to change on that is 0 0.15 units per kilogram. So I don't want to confuse you with that. Mm -hmm. 0 0.15 units per kilogram. It looks like I put it there and then now it's gone again. But, so, oh, I'm sorry, I'll come back. Um, I saw I, I saw how the peripheral vision erased the phone. Okay. So, do you all have any questions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right.